What you are seeing is a small glimpse into the mesmerising universe that makes life as we know it possible. What you are seeing are vapour trails that are formed as ionising radiation passes through a cloud of alcohol vapour. Our sun is one gigantic nuclear power plant that powers our world. All around us every day we are exposed to ionising radiation from outer space and natural background radiation from the earth. Some of our favourite foods even emit tiny amounts of radiation like bananas. Yet for most of us this invisible spectrum goes unnoticed and is often thought of as something unnatural and scary. Radioactive elements need to be respected for sure but we don't need to fear them like there's some monster lurking in the dark waiting to kill us all. There are several types of ionising radiation. First let's look at these alpha rays being emitted from this piece of americium. Alpha particles leave short, wide, fat trails behind. I'll place this piece of paper inside the chamber. You'll notice even a humble piece of paper stops alpha rays. Alpha rays are very weak. The dead skin layer on your body is enough to stop them, so they pose little risk to us unless you ingest or inhale alpha-emitting particles. Let's move on to beta rays. One source for this is thorated TIG welding electrodes which contain around 2% thorium. I cut an electrode into several pieces to fit inside the chamber. Beta rays produce long, thin, straight trails. If I put both samples side by side in the chamber, the difference in appearance is quite striking. Beta rays can pass through paper, but a layer of foil stops them dead in their tracks. Beta rays can penetrate skin and in high enough doses can cause skin burns. However, the amount of beta rays coming from this welding electrode is very low. Going in an aeroplane or getting an x-ray will expose you to far higher levels than what I'm showing you here. Moving on to gamma rays, gamma rays produce very fine curly trails. Gamma rays laugh at paper and foil. Thick concrete or metal such as lead is used to stop gamma radiation. Gamma rays can easily pass right through the human body, which when used in the correct manner such as getting an x-ray on your body for medical reasons is very useful. On the flip side, high doses of gamma rays can damage your DNA, which leads to a wide range of medical issues or in extreme cases such as the heroic people that cleaned up the Chernobyl disaster, high doses can be fatal in a matter of days. However, you shouldn't panic about this. Your body is designed to cope with the natural background radiation that comes from Earth and cosmic rays from outer space. Also, if you have radioactive samples, proper storage is essential. Although this container is a little crude in appearance, it has a minimum of 10mm of solid lead to provide good protection for my samples. What I hope you take away from seeing this is how truly awesome our universe is and hopefully make radiation seem a little less scary. So what exactly is a cloud chamber and how does it work? Let's break it down. Have you ever found yourself situated in a paddock full of cows and need to order circuit boards? Yeah, me neither. But if I did, I would use this video's sponsor, JLC PCB. Five circuit boards cost as little as $2. They offer fast production time and with a multitude of design options, you're only limited by your imagination. Ordering is as simple as going to jlcpcb.com, uploading your Gerber files and choosing your design preferences. You can also choose any colour solder mask at no additional cost. And if you're new to designing circuit boards, then check out my KiCad circuit board series to get you started. Look, look Daisy, free circuit boards. First there is a glass dome to contain isopropyl alcohol vapours. At the bottom of the chamber is a cold plate that needs to be below minus 25C. Ideally minus 30C is even better. At the top of the chamber is a sponge or piece of felt that is soaked in isopropyl alcohol. Provided the ambient temperature is hot enough, the chamber will fill with alcohol vapour and a super saturated layer of alcohol will form just above the cold plate. If we add a heat source at the top of the chamber, we can saturate the air with even more alcohol to improve visual quality of the trails. 
Another key component is producing a high voltage electric field inside the chamber. This is what it looks like with the high voltage turned off. And now on. The difference is literally day and night. The cold plate is negative and suspended above the cold plate is a mesh ring that is positive. This produces an electric field and charges the air. Now I've read conflicting reports on exactly how this improves the quality of the trails, but the one that makes the most sense in my mind is this. When an ionising particle enters the charged alcohol saturated environment, any alcohol vapour in close proximity to the particle gets attracted to it. As more and more alcohol gets attracted to the particle, the air can't hold on to the vapour and thus the vapour turns into tiny droplets that we can see as white trails. Without the electric field, the trails still appear but are nowhere near as impressive. Now if you're interested in building a cloud chamber for yourself, then I recommend you go watch my other video called How Not To Build A Cloud Chamber. There are many design pitfalls that I've fallen into along the way to building the final version that you see here, so you should watch that if you're interested. If you only want the headlines on how this cloud chamber is built, then this video should be ample information for that. So let's get into the build. Keen not to repeat history, first I tested my polycarbonate plastic and cement by soaking test pieces for a few days in isopropyl alcohol. The polycarbonate passed no problem, however the pieces I glued with cement came apart with very little effort, so moving forward I'll design my plastic components to have interference fit to avoid using any glues or cements. Most of the components from my previous attempt are being used in this new version. If you haven't seen that video you can click the link in the top corner to watch it. I'm using the same enclosure, ATX power supply, 12710 Palti air stacks, high voltage setup, LEDs, copper cold plate and H45 coolers. I used my CNC router to cut out the new polycarbonate pieces. I'll include the 3D files for download in the description if you're interested. The bottom of the chamber is comprised of three main components. They stack on top of one another like this. This design allows all the fasteners to be hidden to achieve a clean, sleek appearance and allow the cold plate to be mounted parallel with the floor of the chamber without directly touching anything that would reduce thermal efficiency. I scuffed this piece with 360 grit sandpaper. Doing this helps the accent lighting I'll be adding later diffuse through the plastic. I wrapped a wire around one of the screws that secures the cold plate. Later, the cold plate will be connected to the negative high voltage output wire. I covered the top piece with matte black vinyl. Since the trails appear white, having a black background adds good contrast. I protected the adhesive with a piece of backing until the cold plate is installed later. You can use the blunt end of a drill bit that is the same size as the hole to punch out the vinyl. Just be sure to wrap a cloth around the sharp end to avoid injuring yourself. Next I mounted my LEDs, then removed the backing and carefully lined everything up before sticking the vinyl to the cold plate. I applied thermal compound to the Palti air stacks and installed the coolers. I installed the uprights next to help keep everything aligned.
Now it was just a matter of cramming everything into the enclosure. For my accent lighting I chose to use 12 volt blue LED strips. Transparent double sided tape was applied to the LEDs so the light could shine through and were mounted on the underside of the polycarbonate. I dispensed polyurethane sealant into a small bag and snipped off a corner. I didn't want alcohol getting underneath my LEDs and dripping into the enclosure. I also applied sealant around the uprights. While that cures, I used a soldering iron to install M3 threaded nails into my plastic rings. One of the rings is connected to the positive high voltage wire and the other just acts as a holder for the felt soaked in alcohol. The positive high voltage wire is fed up through one of the tubes and the first ring is installed. One of the screws is backed off and the positive high voltage wire wrapped around it to connect it to the mesh. For a heat source to evaporate the alcohol I chose to use a lower rated Peltier. Peltiers have abysmal efficiency which basically means they produce a lot of heat. I connected it to the 5 volt output of my ATX power supply. This limits the heat output to around 5 watts which after several tests seem to yield the best results in my setup. Too much heat can be as bad as none at all, so you might have to experiment to get it just right. The uprights need to be capped to avoid air being blown into the chamber from the cooler fans below. You don't want any air turbulence inside the chamber. In my last attempt I used a sponge to hold the alcohol, but after doing some research I read that felt does a much better job of evenly dispensing the alcohol into the air. I cut out four circles of felt and sewed together three of them. The last one is stitched on top to act like a pocket to hold the Peltier heater. When you soak the felt in alcohol don't overdo it to the point alcohol is dripping out. Too much alcohol can also cause issues and ruin the effect. So thank you very much for watching. If you found the video useful, please give it a like. It helps out massively. And if you have any questions, leave them in the comments section down below. Thank you to all my supporters on Patreon. You guys rock. And I'll be seeing you in the next video. Bye for now.